We are so glad that you have chosen to join with us today, whether it was intentionally on purpose or whether we have just appeared on your scroll of Facebook or wherever, please know that there is a word for you today and God has a reason for you watching this. Your church may look a little different for you in this season, but can I tell you that God doesn't change, that God never fails us, never leaves us, and I thank you that we serve a God who isn't restricted by buildings, and He's not restricted by the government guidelines today, so that means that He can be right here with us as we worship together, and He can be right where you're at, in your living rooms, in your bedrooms, in the car, wherever you're at. We, our prayer for you today is that the Holy Spirit would fill your room and that you would feel His presence today. Yes, His presence is our desire. That is what it's all about. We believe that Jesus is the answer to all our needs. Whatever your need is right now, please know that Jesus is the answer to that need. We read of all the actions and works that Jesus did in the Bible. And yet it says at the end of the book of John, right in the last few verses, that even all of his actions, all of his works could not be recorded one by one because if they were, the world couldn't hold the books it would take to write that. Isn't that an amazing truth? That all that we do know about Jesus and what he did in this earth is only a snippet of what he can do. And please know that that is still true today, that what we are doing as a church is only a snippet of what he is doing. I can't share it all with you, but I can share some of it. Please know as well that we are committed to three action words. Jesus acted when he was on this earth. He carried out works and we as a church Jesus is our example and we are a church of action. So right now we are committed to three actions, to build, to pray and to provide. We are praying church, there are prayer parties going on, please get involved in those. We are providing hampers to those who are most in need in our community, to kids in our community are getting gifts through Kids Reach because Jesus is the answer to their needs. We this year are providing not only our communities, but our own church families. We are providing an amazing resource for you if you are part of our church family and have kids who are attending kids church or little treasures, that you are. we are providing you with a family devotional, an Advent devotional, ready for you to start that as a family at the beginning of December, to build your family, a strong family around the Word of God, because that is where the strength of your family will come from. Please be looking out for the kids leaders who will be doing doorstep deliveries this week with their gifts and there will be sweet treats there as well so make sure you give them a wave or a thumbs up to make them feel welcome. Lovely. Okay so church lean in. There's lots going on lean in in this season but right now we're going to worship so I want you to lean in, get your hearts ready and I just want to share Um, this verse Jesus was talking to the woman at the well and he said from here on worshiping the father will not be a matter of the right place but with the right heart for God is a spirit and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth so father we thank you today that you are truth we thank you that you are a good good father and we worship and we adore you and we praise you and we love you and we lift your name on high through this season we lift your name as a banner over our lives over every circumstance over everything and our families and our workplaces and we proclaim your goodness Jesus you say I am the way the truth and the life and we just worship you thank you God in Jesus mighty name let's worship Oh, yeah. 
the claim is victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history They're all on a cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known Or for the earth began
to worship yeah. the Lord together yeah. today and church we have entered into his courts with praise this morning yeah. and I just want to remind you that in his courts there's a beautiful exchange when I bring my sin to him he exchanges it for his righteousness yeah. when I bring fear he exchanged it for his perfect love. When I bring anxiousness, he gives peace. When I bring sickness, there's healing. When there's lack, he brings provision. And as we think of our offerings and our tithes today and prepare, when we bring our offerings before the Lord, he brings blessing. Yeah. So it's it's a, we're following his example and giving and, um, our tithes and our offerings this morning. So we want to thank you for doing that in this season. Yeah, we do want to thank you and we want to make that easy for you to give at this time. So you can go to our website gpastures.co.uk forward slash give and that will give details of how you can give no matter when you are ready to do that. We are going to watch some videos now just to show ways and how you can give and then we are getting ready and please lean in for this. Get ready, be expectant as pastor brings a word to challenge you, to encourage you and and to show you how life with Jesus can be better. Giving to church is as easy as sending a text message. To get started, text the word GIVE to 07 44 69 
you'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email receipt. Made a mistake? No problem. Just text refund in a reply. You can also give from our church website by going to www.gpastures.co.uk forward slash give. Or finally, you can give from our church app. Find this at www.gpastures.co.uk forward slash app. Morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining with us this morning. Wasn't the worship team awesome today? We just thank God for them and for everything that they're doing right now. We now have just four weeks left to finish off uh, the build pre-Christmas. And so I uh, want to thank all those hundreds of volunteers that have been here faithfully Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, uh, and for all those who've been praying as well. It's been tremendous. Uh, what God has been doing in our midst, and we're getting so close now. Uh, the app rooms will be finished this week. Uh, the gym is finished and ready to go, and our auditorium work has begun, and so has the kids' auditorium started this week, and so uh, even the carpets have arrived. Uh, to uh, Hey, come on, I, hey man, hey, the carpets have arrived, uh, and the youth auditorium is getting sorted too. So there, we have a few challenges, obviously, in the middle of this. Uh, we really need some more joiners. If you're a joiner out there and you could help us, or painters, uh, and so if you can, just try and contact Jason this week, and we'd love to see you, and you can help out in any way that you can. It would be brilliant. Just four more weeks, uh, and we look forward then to that begin date, that start date on the 10th of January. Let's believe God for that. As I was... Uh, thinking about, Lord, what is it you want me to say to your church today, uh, to your people? I, I, I really f felt that the Lord and the Holy Spirit wanted to say, look, I, I want you to bring some relief uh, and some release to my beloved ones today. There's so much oppression, so much depression from the enemy right now, and it's 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 kind of people are in the place where there's so much worry, uh, worry over uh, employment, worry over how to make ends meet right now, worrying about catching COVID, worrying about our loved ones we know who could catch it or maybe who have it. Uh, and we've been praying that not a hoof of our people in church will touch that will this thing uh, take anybody away. And so we have business worries, we have family worries, we have sickness and disease going on. There's so much uncertainty uh, in the air. There, our, our administration, our, our guys up in Stormont are kind of all over the place and it's difficult. And there's people that have been quarantined and trapped in their house and not able to see their loved ones. And, and you know, there's loss and there's grief in the middle of all of that. And what, what that does to people's heads and to their souls and bodies, uh, because we weren't designed uh, to be locked up. We weren't designed to carry burdens. Sheep aren't designed to carry burdens. Uh, we're not donkeys. And so uh, God wants to speak to us today. The Holy Spirit wants to speak. But not all of us have just attained to such levels of faith in the midst of such adversity and in the midst of such un uncertainty. And so I really wanted to bring a wee word uh, to you today from the Lord to warm your hearts, to warm your hearts, to strengthen you in your faith uh, so that you can be and we can be overcomers in this world by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we're going to turn, if you'll turn with me, to Matthew 6, verse 9. Uh, to 13. We're going to read a wee portion of Scripture, and I pray that this will be a blessing to you. Our Father in heaven, uh, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray for seven. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you how one word heard from yourself changes the ending. Thank you, God, that there will be people today that will go away lighter after this service, Lord, that will go away having heard from you and that has such an effect on their spirit and soul. And so bless your people today. Remember those who are still grieving today, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Be that person in the house that they miss, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus starts by saying, pray in this manner, our Father. Our Father. Can I ask you a question this morning? Who is God to you? Who is God to you? He's, Jesus is saying of God, look, I, I'm not approaching you as a created being or, or some citizen of a town or a city or a nation, or I'm not even approaching you as an employee. Jesus says you need to approach your God from a place of intimacy, from a, a, as a little child coming to their father. He says, our father. That means we're guaranteed success. That means I'm guaranteed. I can come boldly into his presence on the basis of my understanding of who I am as a believer. Today, as a believer, you are a son or a daughter, and I have been born again. Born again. That means I'm a new creation. That means I'm not what I used to be. And so this is why many of us believers don't pray effectively, because they are not con confident in who they are in their God. And when you're not confident, you are in two minds when you approach Him. You're double-minded. And so particularly if you've come from a background where you didn't have a good father relationship. Maybe you had a father who was abusive. Maybe you had a father who neglected your, his responsibilities uh, or who is indifferent and was indifferent to you, never really bothered. Maybe he was out working all the time, thinking that that was the way to do fatherhood. But where the word father conjures up negative experiences in your soul. And so you have difficulty coming to God, the, the perfect father, because you didn't get uh, the model right in your childhood. And therefore, it's not right in your prayer life. Okay? That's something that you really need to address as a believer. Uh, and I, could I suggest a, a book written by Ken Symington? Uh, on the Father Heart of God, and, and I, if you can get I think it's in Amazon, it would be a well worth a read for you. You see, when you come to my house, uh, you need to be let in through the front door, okay? And I need to give you permission to get into my fridge. Not everybody gets into my fridge, I have to tell you, because uh, that's where my stash is. Okay, that's where I keep all my good stuff that nobody else gets to get be in my, in my fridge. And so if you're coming in, you need to have a real good reason for being in my fridge. And so you better ask me nicely before you do come in. But my kids, well, you know, they don't do nothing like that. They have a pass key. Okay, Adam just comes in there and he goes in into the fridge and he eats at well and he eats for my fridge without any problems or any threat or anything like that there because they're my kids. They're my, my kids and they have chosen to come and live under and with their father. You see, I said they had, have absolute access to everything that I have, and it's based on who they are to me. Do you know that you have absolute access to God based on who you are to him? 
through Jesus Christ. If you don't know that, you will never get to the fridge. You will never get to the stash. You will act like a stranger, uh, and you'll sit quietly. Does anybody have a good room? Yeah, well, if you have a good room in the house, you'll know what I'm talking about. You keep the good rooms for the strangers that come in that makes you and them think everything's fine in the house, whereas the rest of the place is like Beirut, and you're sitting in the good room, okay? You see, you act like a stranger, but really, he wants, God wants you to come on in. God wants you to come on in because he loves you as a son. He loves you as a daughter. But you have never been taught and you've never understood how to be loved by an Abba Father, God, that's perfect in every single way. You know, this is so important. What we all have in common is the fatherhood of God, the Father. His DNA, we're born again. He says, our Father, because he wants you at the start of your prayer to know that you share with him the, as believers, that, that with that believer next to you, because if he is our father as a believer, then you're my brother, you're my sister, because we have this common father God together. Okay, so when you have discovered who your Abba God is for yourself, then you must realize it goes on, Jesus goes on to say, it's our Father in heaven, which tells us that our Abba Father God is in the position of authority. So I am uh, your son because you are my father, but now I need to understand that my father is the CEO of the universe. I mean, like he is the boss. He is king of kings. Yeah, you know, the Bible says he's Lord of Lords, and we sing that a lot. And so, see, heaven is just his throne, and the earth is just where he keeps his feet. And so he's everywhere, and he's everywhere all of the time. And he's always with us, and he's never, he's never away from us. But because he's in heaven, you can know that my Abba is the boss. That means that I don't have a problem that I'm facing today that he doesn't have authority over. Oh, come on. Come on. There's, come on. That means today that there isn't a problem that I'm facing that he doesn't have authority over. I don't have an issue that he cannot fix. I don't have a giant that he can't take down because he's the boss, and I have chosen to come in to, under his care. You see, our Father in heaven... And now remember, this is Jesus teaching us, teaching you, teaching me how to pray. Jesus says, once you understand that, you have an intimate relationship with the Father God who can do anything. Then the next thing I want you to do in the process of prayer is praise Him. Praise Him. Hallowed be your name. Jesus said, hallowed be your name. Come on, delight yourself in God. You know, you maybe take delight in, in watching Liverpool during the week. What a terrible, rubbish team that they are. But anyway, uh, you might be delighted in a whole lot of things. But if you put your delight in the Lord, then hallowed be your name. Don't get out your, your give me list just yet because the first thing you ought to do and what I ought to do is to give my God some thanks, to give my God some praise because we don't praise God because we are emotional beings. We don't praise God because it's uh, our theology. We praise God because He is worthy to be praised today. And when we praise Him, do you know what we're really doing? We're really recognizing His authority again. There's that word again, that word authority. When you praise him with all that you have, I mean with all that you have. I don't mean standing there just in two minds, so kind of indifferent. I mean with all that is within you, not just a little bit. But when you praise him with all that you have and admit you are admitting to everybody around you that there is somebody who is bigger than you. 
And that's important. That's important for us today in the midst of all that's going on in this life and in this world right now. And especially the men, especially the men out there that are listening to me, the men to actually admit publicly in acts of worship that we come under somebody else's authority and not just, we're not just standing at your own throne. And so can I hear an amen from all the men folks here today? An amen that you have somebody in your life that you can trust apart from yourself. Oh, to do that is to really find out how to get rid of all that stress, all that concern, all that worry that is up in you and up in us today. It means you realize that the buck doesn't stop with you. Come on, how good is that? It means you don't have to run everything. Come on. It means you don't have to run everything. It means that you don't have to solve every problem because I'm not God. And you're saying to God by praising him that I know that I'm not God today, that you are my God, but I have a God in heaven. And so hallowed be your name, God. And he's my father. And so I don't have to sit on the edge of the bed all night trying to work out what tomorrow is going to bring because he already knows and he is already sorted. And so hallowed be thy name, Lord. You see, I'm praising him because he's God over my situation. I'm going to say that again. Uh, you are praising God today because he is God over your situation. Are you believing that? He's God when I'm rich, and he's God when I'm poor. Hallowed be your name. Okay? Then Jesus said a wonderful thing to us. He says, I want you to pray that thy kingdom would come. Oh, Oh, this is this bad so good. I want you to pray that thy kingdom would come. That that really means that the government government of God would come. Okay? Thy kingdom come. I don't want to be ruled or defeated by anything. I don't want to be ruled or defeated by sickness. I don't want to be ruled or defeated by COVID. I don't want to be destroyed be distracted. I don't want to be hate, full of hatred. I don't want to be ruled by malice or envy or strife or, or even in principalities and powers of darkness. I don't want anything to rule over me but my Abba Father. And so, Lord, guide my steps. I willingly come praising you, believing that you are God over my life today. Thy kingdom come. Say come. It's come. Come on. Thy kingdom has come into my body. Bring my, your kingdom into my body. It's my house. Come into my business. Come into my thinking. Come into my family. Ask God to come in. Be Lord over my life. Every part of it, I submit to you. I give it to you. You are my God, my Father, and you are the Lord over my life. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Come on. Thy will be done. Do you believe that God's will is going to be done in your life today? Have you submitted yourself in obedience to the will of God today? How are you do, still doing this stuff yourself? I want what you have written God to, do, to be done in my life. Come on, I want what you have written in that Bible to be done in my life. If I am not defeated in my Bible, I am not defeated in my heart. Come on, that's far better than you're giving me credit for this morning. And he looks over to the five or six people in this room and going, where are you this morning? <laughs> yeah, oh, come on. I, I want you to know I want what you have written to be done in my life. If I am not defeated in my Bible, I am not defeated in my heart. If I am not a failure in my Bible, then I am not a failure in my heart. Thy will be done, Lord. Where? On earth. How? As it is in heaven. You see, do you remember when uh, Jesus gave, uh, we're told to give Peter the keys to the kingdom. And he said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He says, I want you to unlock things until what is going on in heaven is going on in the earth. Thy will be done in earth, on earth as it is in heaven. And then he says, are you ready for this? He says this, he says, give us. Give us. 
This is where the poverty gospel guys don't know what to do. You see, notice how vulnerable Jesus says we are to ask. Give us. Give us. You know, give us. You know, give us. You know, there, there's something about that. It means I can't do this. It means I can't do this on my own. Give us. That is an admission that I am beat without you to give us. If I could get me, I wouldn't have to ask him to give me. Jesus is telling us to trust our Abba for our provision. And so I'm admitting that I have limitations. I I can't do this on my own, Lord, but I realize that you are unlimited. Okay? Give us. Give us. Even in asking, give us. We are really praising God because I would never ask for something that I didn't think that you had. You never see anybody walking up to some poor wee man on the streets that has got nothing and asking him for a couple of hundred pounds to pay your electric bill because none of us would do that because we wouldn't believe that he had it to give to us. And so people only ask you for something when they believe that you have got it to give. And so Jesus says to us, give us. And this is a pattern of prayer that Jesus wants us to adopt, his sons and his daughters. He says, give us. Give us is a praise, not only an admission of my vulnerability, it's a confession of I haven't got it all together, God, and I am vulnerable to things on this planet. And so God, give us this day. Give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. This day. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord, my table's empty. Right now, Lord, I don't know where to turn. This day. Not yesterday. Not yesterday's bread. God comes with fresh bread every day. And so, I think that's wonderful. And in case, I I don't know whether you remember this or not, and I'm finishing with this here, and you've been listening really well, and I hope that this is a a, a, a help to you all today. You remember when the manna fell down from heaven. And the Bible says that the manna fell according to each man's house. Now, let me say that again, because that's really important. The manna fell according to each man's house. Some men received more manna than others. And some men received less manna than others. Now, are you watching? Are you listening carefully? And so th- this is what we can take for this. Manna falls according to your hunger. Manna falls according to your capacity. God is not going to give every man two loaves because not everybody has the same hunger. Not everybody has the same capacity. Okay, For the man who had five children in his house, God gave the man more bread than the man who had one child because God responds according to your need, according to your hunger, and according to your capacity. God responds to hunger. And that's why you ought not to be jealous when your brother next to you has more bread than you. God gave you what you could handle for that day you're in. And so never teach people that God is fair. Never teach people that God is fair. God is not fair. God is just. He's just. There is a big difference between fair and just. Fair is giving everybody two loaves of bread. Just is giving you the amount of bread that you can handle. Oh, come on, that is is so good. Just as giving you only what you want to eat. Okay? Raise your hands and shout, Lord, give me what I can handle. Don't give me what I can't handle today. And let that be your prayer today. Lord, don't give me anything that I can't handle. Don't give me anything that is too much 
for me, Lord, to look after. Don't even give me that bigger business. Don't give me that bigger house if it's going to drive me crazy because I can't manage it. Oh, come on, there's so many believers today that are driven, driven by things that God would not really want you to have. But you keep pressing them and you keep asking them. And then when he gives you, you'll find out that you were never meant to handle what you'd been given. So give me according to my capacity, Lord. That's what we ought to be praying to. Give me according to my past. Teach me to be content at the level that I live in. Amen? The level that you have designed for me to be in. So I don't have to strive in life anymore. I don't have to strive in life anymore. Instead of strolling through life, I don't need to strive. You would be shocked at the people who are not content on their level. And they're trying to be and they want to be driven by ambition, competing to be accepted by their mom and their dad, or maybe it's the lady in their life with the big ring on that's causing them to to, to push on any stuff that they were never meant to have. If you believe this, if you believe this today, you will never be jealous of another person because of what they have. Because you will be happy to be who God made you to be to be content in whatsoever state that I am in. Oh God, can you feel the peace of that? Can you feel the peace of what that would do to your soul? If I'm going to have stress, a stress attack and heart attacks because I don't have the hunger and the capacity, God, don't give me it, Lord. And so everybody shout this morning, Lord, give me this day my, my personal daily bread. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Come on. Oh, God is cooking up for some of you today the best bread that you can ever imagine for your today. And it's going to taste, taste and see that the Lord is good today. There are blessings for you today, but you have to get your head out of your past. You have to get your pet. You have to renew this mind into the thinking of what Jesus is really saying about how to pray today, how to come before the Father today, who He really is and that He is the boss and that He is out there and He is willing to adopt you into His family. That you're a son and a door. And so, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Do you know, we're going we're gonna, to sing this sweet song this morning in your presence there is everything sing it with us when in your presence there is everything that I need for my soul and there is healing and forgiveness oh,
maybe you're here today and you find yourself just tuning into this for no apparent reason, but you feel just so abandoned, helpless. Maybe even your mother and your father have even forsaken you today. You know, the Bible talks so clearly that when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me in. I love that. I love that. And so, how does that work, Pastor? How does that work? How, how do I become this son or daughter? Well, Jesus said, you must be born again. He said, you must be born again. He said that to a minister too. And so he said that to a religious leader. Even he had to be born again. And so it's not about good living and doing good things. He says, you have to be born again. Or, or you couldn't even see the kingdom of God, is what Jesus says. You see, we were born physically into this world through your mother's womb, but now Jesus says we are to be born spiritually. We are to be born of His Spirit. That's Him giving us a completely new nature. You know, you find it trouble dealing with your sin and trying to, trying to overcome it, but God will give you a new nature. You won't be the same person. You'll be a new creation in Jesus Christ when you are born again. So how do I get born again, Pastor? How do I do it? Well, Jesus says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, believe Jesus is your Savior. He's your Savior from yourself. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that it would through him might be saved. You know you need saved today you need saved from yourself saved from your habits saved from them things that have bound you and kept you strung out and strung up and tied up for all these years and now you've come to a place where you were looking for happiness and you were looking for this but you found out there was nothing in that and it was an empty vessel, it was just a, a dead thing and I want to tell you this morning that Jesus says that he's the way he is the way and the way is to be born again into the family of God, okay? So that you can pray that what we just prayed, so that you can have the peace that we just talked about, so that you can have everything that God wants you to have. But the only way that you can do that is through the Spirit. See, God is the Spirit, and God is looking for you to come into His nature, to be like God. And so there's a way of doing that, and you have to come through Christ. You have to come through Jesus if you want to get in to be born again. And so do that today. Why not pray uh, this prayer, this wee prayer this morning and then contact some of our guys. Okay, put a thumbs up uh, icon on your screen and, and, and let's, let's believe God to change you today. That, that you don't have to be who you are right now. God has provided a way whereby we can be born of His Spirit and that will give us the power to be overcomers in this life. And so let's just pray. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you today. We call you Abba. We call you Father. We get to do that, Lord. And we ask that you, Lord, would come into our hearts. Lord, would you birth us into your family? Would you adopt us into your family? Lord, forgive us, Father, for doing it our own way. Forgive us, Lord, for thinking that we could do it better than you could do it, Lord. And so from this day forward, God, come into our lives, change our hearts, Lord. Give us a newness of life that you speak about. And from this day forward, Lord, we will serve and love you and delight ourselves in you that you might give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' lovely name, we pray. Oh, thank you for being with us today. You're, you've been, I hope you're blessed by this We message today. And I hand you over to the worship team who will take you on. And come on, let's stand and let's, let's worship Jesus this morning. Come on, anybody in love with Jesus this morning? Come on, let's worship him. Come on, let's worship him.
desire and dream I'm laying down at your feet Humbled I come Surrendering all every part of me Your ways are higher than mine And I'm trusting you with my life Oh God, lead the way All that I am for your kingdom's cause For your glory, Lord And how great the name of Jesus The name above all names I give my life to honor The sacrifice you make Oh, I'm letting go of the past Cause I know the plans that you have Oh, Jesus in me, let your glory be seen That the world
the sacrifice you made and how great the love of Jesus a love that rescued me I give my life to serve you and I owe you everything
just show our appreciation to Pastor Jeff for yeah. bringing us a wonderful word this morning. I love that the man only falls in accordance with our capacity and hunger. Lord, increase our hunger today. And now it's over to you to respond to the word of God. You know, Jesus calls those who only hear the word and not act on it as foolish, a foolish man who builds his house on sand and it gets washed away. You need to respond to God's word today in your heart. And we have pastors online uh, right now, if you're watching this live, who are, willing, who are there to pray with you, to stand with you, to agree with you in this season. And if you're not watching it live, please contact us over um, social media, uh, by email, by phone call. We would love um, to support you in this season. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, and remember that we are committed to action over this next seri series, or these next seasons, sorry. Uh, this season of Build, Pray and Provide. Please get involved in the work parties and the prayer parties that are happening. If you're not sure what's going on, check our socials and our website, or get in touch with Pastor Jason, build at gpastures.co.uk. UK. I just had to check that there. But please know that if we don't see you through this week, that we are praying for you. We are here for you. Please connect with us if we can help you in any way. And if we don't see you through the week, we will see you online. You'll join with us online next week. See you then.